The question before the Chamber is an adoption of Senate Amendment Schedule A. Will you remark on the amendment? Representative Wood of the 141st. Um, I would like to defer to Representative Wong. Representative Wong of the 131st. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I would like to rise in support of this amendment. Uh, I would like to take a few moments to thank the fantastic work uh, that uh, the good representative from the 83rd District has put into this, not only this year, but since the origination of this coverage for autism in 2008. And, and her work has been peerless, and I want to thank her. Uh, at the same time, I want to thank the good colleagues in this chamber, as well as take a moment to recognize the input of the ranking member of Insurance and Real Estate, uh, Representative Sampson, and I also want to thank the good work of my good colleague, uh, Representative Kokoruda, who's done some good work in this as well. Um, but most important of all, I want to thank the parents, the parents and the advocates for autism who have given so much. They are truly the people that we want to give thanks to and recognize that for all that they do, they do it for their children. They do it for the people that are impacted by autism. So I would ask that uh, we fully support this and recognize that this is simply a continuation of a bill that was passed in 2008. And we are ensuring that regardless of whatever happens with the diagnostic uh, interpretations or the Affordable Care Act, that we continue to be responsible and maintain our, our commitment to those families and children and those unborn children that will be impacted by autism. This is something that I'm very proud to be a part of, and I'm even prouder to be a part of a team that is committed nonstop to making sure that we cure this disease. Through you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Representative. Representative Kokoruda of the 101st. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I stand in support of this amendment. I also stand to thank the co-chairs of the insurance committee and Representative Wong, and especially Representative Abercrombie, for her leadership on this issue. This bill simply, this amendment simply ensures that all of our children who are receiving services now do not lose them. And any change in the definition could have a wide range impact on our kids. And it's a concern in the autism community. Autism Speaks, which is one of the, the most well-known autism organizations and has done so much, has, start, has decided to do a national survey of families and professionals to see just how DSM-5 is going to impact these families. So I think this bill is so important because we don't have that information yet. And finally, it is a concern of the autism community, and, and, and I'm one of them, um, that, that redefining autism it's a red flag for those of us who know people are concerned about the skyrocketing number of people diagnosed under the spectrum. But redefining autism spectrum disorder certainly isn't what we're looking for. So, again, thank you for your leadership, Representative Abercrombie. Thank you. I, I encourage my colleagues to support this amendment. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Representative. Representative Wood of the 141st. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Speaker, I also stand in support of this bill. I think so many of us are here to help others, and this is a perfect example of a safety net that we can prevent and help for those who really need this. So I hope you all will join us in supporting this. Thank you, Madam Chair. Speaker. Representative Zebron of the 34th. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and I also rise in support of the amendment, but I do, I mean, the, uh, uh, yes, the amendment, but I do have a question to the proponent. Uh, in my community, Madam Speaker, we have a world-renowned school called Franklin Academy. And Franklin Academy in East Haddam is a boarding and day school for students with nonverbal learning uh, differences and specifically Asperger's syndrome. I also have a godson with Asperger's syndrome and we, I think, unfortunately may know somebody who is afflicted with some spectrum disorder of autism. And my question uh, to the proponent through you, Madam Speaker, is, is the redefinition, redef I really don't know, does that take out the Asperger's uh, or 
how, how, how is that redefinition going to affect a wonderful community school like uh, Franklin Academy in my district? Through you, Madam Speaker. Representative Abercrombie. Thank you, Madam Speaker. That's an excellent question. I think a lot of the anxiety throughout the autism community was around that specific um, diagnosis. What was going to happen to our Asperger kids, which are the high-functioning ones? From everything I've read, and I'm not an expert, but I do do a lot of reading on it, the Asperger kids are going to be protected under the new definition. With that said, from what I have read is that the kids that are on the more severe part, the lower part of the spectrum, will be affected, which is even scarier, because these are the kids that we know if they get the early intervention can succeed successfully through life. Without that intervention, there's a lot more challenges for them. Um, we are still waiting for the guidelines, even though the definition did come out last weekend. The guidelines, my understanding, will not be out before October, which is really scary because it still gives these families a lot of anxiety. So that's why I think this legislation is so important to be the safety net for these families. But good question, Representative. Representative Zebron of the 34th. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And, and I just want to thank the gentle lady for that answer. Um, you know, it's, it's, when we see those kinds of changes that affect these kids who are, uh, so special.